Hello, and welcome to the RPGTO video tutorial for DMs. I'm going to be showing you quite a number of things, some of which are subscriber only. Um, I've been a subscriber since the day it transferred over to the GTO, and I don't always remember what's a subscriber only um, detail. I do know that almost everything you can get as a subscriber, you can get uh, just by paying the gold. And actually, even as a, su as a subscriber, most things cost gold. It's only a few things that don't. So, let's get started. First thing I'm going to show you is DM Journal. You're already familiar with that, and journal entries are public only when you want them to be. PCs, you can always edit a PC. Initiative, only you can do initiative. Only you can ready or delay or edit after it's rolled. Only you can add the monsters. You will also need to delete uh, some of the player tokens when a player is not there or their familiars, companions, etc. Okay, so the other thing you need to do is monsters. Now, all of the 4E monsters are available in packs for sale. If you needed a different monster, that is easily done, and I'll show you how. Um, towards the end of this video, I believe. Maps. A good portion of your time is going to be spent on map making, so a good portion of this video is spent on maps. Now, this is an example of an image uploaded as a map. Now, this is something you really almost can't use as a map. Um, it needs to be uh, edited. Okay, for one thing, in its real size, it only comes in as a thumbnail that's going to occupy, the, you know, that teeny tiny amount of space. Again, unusable. Um, for another thing, the borders on it make it not match up with the tiles, and that's going to be really, really important uh, when you're actually in combat. So, here is an example. Oh, new map. You can always put in a blank map just by new map and that lets you add tiles or you know bring in an image this image is another uploaded one from sarlona it is an eberron map and as you can see you can either share it as an image or you can use the image as a map now it is always going to come in exactly at that left upper corner when you're just using it to show the players you know a general world map that's not so important it's going to be very very important when you want to use that map as a as a battle mat and when you are in map a battle mat will superimpose and then it becomes very very obvious when it's not properly edited but let's go ahead and go to one that's not properly edited um, when I brought this in I did not quite cut it correctly um, so when once I brought it in and that became very obvious once I placed tokens on it I used this map to find figure out what I did wrong I and then I counted and I placed tokens to tell myself exactly where I wanted to to cut it the next time I made this map and what was wrong was that border I cut off most of it okay but what I didn't see, you know, because I wasn't zoomed up far enough, is that there is a top edge that does not line up exactly. And over the course of the entire map, that becomes very, very obvious. Okay. So, again, I use this to re-edit. Now let's go ahead and show you how to do that. As you can see, I used these to mark the map where I wanted to go ahead and recut it and redo it. So it becomes really, really obvious when you have the battle mat on that the tokens <laughs> do not match up. But it would also become really obvious once you placed a token because, again, it's not going to sit in its correct uh, box. going to mess up your line of sight number of squares, etc, etc. So you want this to be as accurate as possible. Alright, so here's another one that I redid, and you see from edge to edge the tokens match up. Alright, let's go ahead and show you how to do that. Now, I'm using ma maps from the Watsi uh, 
site the archived maps that are free to use. This is the one I used, obviously, War Tower, Warden, Skilled Hall, and in this you can see exactly how much I cut off. Alright, let's go ahead and get a fresh map so that you can see the whole process of editing the map. And I'm using GIMP. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the new DM site. Now you can go to this from the Watsi uh, community site directly. I just use the new DM site because it's linked there and it's in the wiki. And there's a couple of other things in the wiki that I want to show you, so let's go ahead and go there. All right, DM resources. There is a host of little things that um, we have found. Um, I've used reliable sites that I know about. Obviously, there's a whole lot more. And since this is a community wiki, you are free to add and edit. DM tips, tricks, and tools. Not a lot there. Uh, again, add anything you find that's useful. And it doesn't have to be to the VT. It's, it's a DM guide, so it applies actually more to tabletop. This is DMing made easy. Gargs 454 had a whole series of articles that are very, very approachable, very, very readable, and well titled, so easy to get what you want. Paladin's Pride also made a fantastic series on traps. I think it's required reading for DMs. I really do. So I added it to the wiki. All right, let's go to the downloadable poster maps. Um, the large maps that you see here are really not that usable. They are too large for the entire table. You're going to have to do a lot of editing, and counting those squares is a bloody nightmare. All right, but you can take it and um, edit it. You will have to edit it, otherwise it's going to come into the, into the table that size. Um, and you can use it, you know, as a guide but you're going to have to cut it into sections to use it as a map. All right, let's go to the archive. There are a ton of maps available for free. Go down to map a week, right down here. And let's go to, mm, nah. This is where I got the two maps that you saw the one for Sarlona and the one for the Warden's Guild Hall. Let's go ahead and use a DAR. You're going to right click on it, save image as, save it to desktop, or rename it something that you can remember, in this case a DAR, and then of course you're golden. So then go into GIMP and you're going to open a file in GIMP. Oh, let's go ahead and take another map first and uh, just show you two maps back to back. All right, um, not quite sure what we want to use. Demon Web Pits, well, let's look. No, nothing that we really can use uh, for what we need. Under Mountain, mm, let's try that. And Let's go ahead and go, ah, all right, and we got the Styx Oarsman map. All right, and this map, I can tell you right now, we're going to have to cut into sections because the Styx Oarsman map has a gap in it that does not match the tiles at all. So impossible to do it as a whole map poster. You will need it in sections. So let's go ahead and open up a DAR. Now this one's going to be very, very easy to edit because you're just going to be using it as a poster. So once you open it, you're going to um, just make sure that it's large enough for the players to see and, and read. So I'm going to go to save image as, no, first I'm gonna scale the image, okay. Once I scale the image to something large enough, usually I pick something in the 2400 range. Then I'm going to export it. Uh, once I export it, it's saved, really, back to my desktop. I don't need to save any changes after that. Um, then I will go ahead and go to the next map, the Styx Oarsman map. And 
I'm gonna wanna, you know, take this a size larger so that I can really, really see where I'm trimming. And once I do that, I can see that there's a border there, um, that outer edge that I'm really going to need to cut off very, very carefully because it's right in the middle of the line. All right, so first I'm going to count the number of squares in width and then the number of squares down. I always do width first and then vertical um, so that I adjust the pixels correctly. All right, so this is going to be 14 squares over and I believe 18 squares down. So that's going to be uh, times 50. Each, tie, each of the small squares on the battle mat is 50 pixels. So you need to multiply your number of squares by 50 to adjust your pixel size. All right, so 14 across is 700, 18 down is 900, and that's the size we're going to make our map. So first we're going to cut it. Now, if you right click on it, uh, we're gonna wanna go to tools, no tools. Hmm. Bit canvas to selection and, uh, well, tools first, rectangle, select, cut it exactly what you want it to, then fit canvas to selection. You do that by right clicking and hovering, um, hover over it, right click on it, and then fit canvas to selection. Then you're going to adjust the pixels. So that's 700, and once we do that, we're going to be able to tell, you know, about if we cut it accurately. So when we do that, we see it's 897 pixels, and that's not going to, it's off over a much larger map. It would matter, and I'd probably recut it and adjust it, but over this small of a map, it's not going to matter. So go ahead and scale it. Once it's scaled, you can go ahead and export it. So you can do that from file or again, right uh, hover over the map, right click on it, and from file, we go to export. And export it again. Yes, you save the changes, and once you're, you've exported, you don't need to save the changes again. You can easily just X on out of there. Okay, so next we go back to our table. And from there, we can import these images. Now, this is just a couple of steps. So go to images at the top and upload the image. Um, we saved it to desktop, so obviously we're going to want to go to desktop. And from there, it's an easy, quick second to find a DAR. Now, this is uploaded images. This is a separate... Um, file then you know uploaded maps and uploaded adventures and and you're gonna save it then you're gonna go to map make sure you have a nice fresh uh, clean map it will overwrite so if you don't need that image anymore you can go ahead and um, overwrite it but it's more fair to say that it just piles it on top. So if one map is bigger than the other, in some way you're going to see that edge. All right, we're going to go ahead and upload the boat map. And once we've done that, we're ready to add them to our table. So it is a nominal cost to upload an image. You get 50 free slots a month if you're a subscriber. After that, it's a nominal cost to upload the image. Um, let's see. So here we go. We have a nice blank map. Then we go back to images. We upload. We click on it. 
Now you can use this in two ways. Okay, you can just share the image, and that lets your player see it. Looks like I'm frozen for a moment. But once it's uploaded and you're using it as a map, then you can see that you can give your players, you know, a, a visual reference for the towns and, and everything else that they want to see. And that's a, a very nice use of uploaded images. Although since this is the internet, it's uh, quick and easy to do that without uploading and without the cost if you if you don't have the free slots. Now, if you're in map, it's going to overlay that battle mat on it, but only if you're in map. Okay, so next let's do the next... Um, oh, you're going to want to rename it to what it is so that when you're actually playing, you can access your maps easily. Otherwise, they tend to be named Map 1, Map 2, Map 3, Map 4 used to work for me when I only had a few maps, but that is no longer the case. A uh, few maps in one game, now I have a lot. If you DM, you can have as many games as you can manage. Alright, now we have our boat. And you can see that edge to edge, our tokens match up with our tiles. So, line of sight and um, range are going to work. All right. Um, a lot of these maps, when you're really looking through them and, and, you know, picking them carefully, come both ways. They come with the token markers, M, you know, V, S, whatever, for the name of the monsters, and they also come clean as in no little spots where you're supposed to put your monsters to start. Now manage saved maps. Um, let's go ahead and import a map so that I can show you um, how very quick and easy it is to make a map. And um, I'm just going to do that by editing this one. Uh, first of all, I've got this map and I've layered it just a little bit um, to include a real couple of rooms. So I know where those are because I've made a myself a map note. That little blue box that you see, if you scroll over it, um, you can read the map note. You can ma make map notes everywhere. You can make them public by clicking the public box. Otherwise, they are by default uh, private, yours only. Um, journal entries, of course, are the same way, by default private, and you have to make them public. And when you make them public, then they are a nice golden color. And just save it, and there you go. So that's the difference between a public note and a private note. Okay, and you see another little tiny blue scroll note where I have another house. Now, down where that purple section is, that is the fog of war. I pretty much always have a fog of war somewhere in my map because I use it to hide monsters in and I use it to uh, you know hide tiles in so that I don't have to in the middle of a game you know go get a fireball it's just you know kind of a given that somebody's gonna start a fire um, so I've got that handy and I don't have to you know click on the dungeon tiles and wait for them to load and here you see where I have made rooms underneath the rooftops. Quick, simple, easy. I'm also going to show you how to add tiles. So first of all, you're going to want to go to the right where you have your dungeon tiles. You have a large selection of tiles available to you. Uh, pretty much they're all going to need to be purchased. So go to the tile you want and left click on it and slide it and drag it over. Um, by holding down the left click and then clicking the right click, you can very, very quickly rotate the tile. Now, you can also uh, right click on it and scroll down to rotate tile and right click on it and scroll down to rotate tile and right click on it and scroll down to rotate tile. Uh, that's a lot too tedious for me. So, here we go. Now, you're going to see that the um, lines that I added to make the tavern have the appropriate walls are going to show through. Uh, the order of importance for the m maps 
are tiles and you can layer tiles as much as you want move them front to back you know line them up where they make sense for you so you have tiles okay then you have drawing drawing overlays on the tiles and then tokens overlay on that both uh, monster and character so you never lose your tokens in a puddle of blood now it's going to be it's very very easy to eliminate the drawing you can do it one of two ways okay. um, and that's me showing you how to move the tile to the back okay now eliminating the drawing one of two ways you can either click on the drawing tool go to the eraser tool and use it to highlight the area that you want oh puddle of blood there we go knew I had one and here's the monster you're gonna see that even in a puddle of blood he shows up now with the eraser tool you can rectangle you know and erase a large block at one time you can erase just a tiny section with the, the small eraser or you can erase all drawing off the map by clicking on map scrolling down to clear all drawing and you're going to clear it off the entire map so since I almost can't help myself you know I've got to finish the building let's go ahead and finish the building <laughs> So this would be a mansion, you know, in on the edge of town kind of thing. And I would eliminate the houses that were in the way. So once you have your maps and you've saved, they're very, very easy to, you know, pull up and just edit them quickly for what you need at that particular moment. There are a large number of tiles available, and I'm going to show you um, the store where you can buy them. You can also buy them tokens uh, there or you can buy them right here in the table if you need something very very quickly. You never know. You'd swear I like cartography as much time as I spend on maps. But, and I have a large number that are, that are mostly my own. Um, let's go ahead and go to dungeons so we can finish this off. Every manor needs a banquet hall. So let's go ahead and grab that table. Again, drag and drop. It needs a little rug. So there we go. Drag and drop. And you'll just finish this off by adding you know your large dungeon tiles um, I tend to move tiles out of the way rather than then um, move them front to back and that's because I do have a lot of layering so on something like that where I know I've got about I don't know seven layers <laughs> it's a lot faster and easier to just move a tile out of the way and then add it back in okay so what did I promise next? Let's go ahead and close all of this out. And go to... go to the store so here we have the repository um, you're going to be able to save your PCs save your maps save your adventures save your images all of that is right here uh, go back to current campaigns really should and you're going to be able to to uh, get public ones now that is a subscriber only feature that's not something you can buy well I guess you're buying it when you subscribe but you get my meaning uh, almost everything else is independently available for gold so uh, here you see adventures like I said it's a pet peeve of mine save your maps clean um, say when you save adventures then yeah import the 
PCs and the monsters and all of that. But when you save a map, you're going to save yourself a lot of time, and you're going to save somebody else time if you share that map from having to clear all of those tokens off. So, there are a number of things available to you, and you're going to learn whose maps and whose adventures are, you know, well done, and whose are, okay, well, it did save me a minute. <laughs> All right, so you're going to go back to current campaigns and let's go to the store. So in the store, you're going to find a lot of things tiles, tokens, um, it's easy to purchase gold right there, green bar right at the top, and available within minutes, um, if, you even, if you even wait that long. So, let's go ahead and buy a few things. You're going to see that probably nobody owns everything because there's so much available. Um, and easy to purchase it when you need it rather than you know all at once so once we get that and let's go ahead and take a look at the tiles since I didn't show them to you in the table you've got a lot of different sets available almost anything you could want uh, these are the monster sets And all the D&D &D monsters, as far as their stats, these are just the tokens, okay? The D&D &D monsters, as far as their stats for 4E um, and powers, come in heroic paragon and epic tier packages. So you're going to be able to buy them like that. And if you don't need them, you don't buy them. You don't spend gold that you don't have to. Um, it's very, very easy to edit tokens on the table. Um, so that you can make monsters from any rule system that you need. Or even D&D 4E. So, uh, here I'm showing you the difference between managed save maps and managed saved adventures. Here is someone who exported a map with a whole bunch of stuff on it that I'm not going to need. So, you know, in order to use this, I'm going to have to clean up the tokens, the characters off it and clean up the monsters out of my monster pile so that I don't have to look through a whole bunch of stuff before I get to what I actually need and have and have edited myself. So here we um, have an example of your initiative and here we go adding the party. That quick, that simple, that easy. They can edit and roll themselves. Once they're rolled only you can edit. Now, it's going to save you a whole lot of time and, f and irritation if you edit your monsters well. And by what I mean by that is put your attack and effects in, put your damage and damage types in, and if they have secondary and tertiary attacks, add those lines in. If you need something from another system, go ahead, click on monster, click on new monster. It's going to give you just the most basic things so that you can make it what you need to make it. So here we go, making a new monster, Bugs. And Bugs is an epic level nuisance. So there we go. And I'm going to be able to add powers to Bugs just like every other monster. So here's my power, what's up Doc? Um, other and damage are all you have. You don't have an attack roll because not every system uses the same attack. A system like L5R that uses, you know, X many dice and keep X many, you know, 10 D6s keep four. Well, you're going to be able to do that. You're going to be able to roll the dice. Um, it's not going to do the keep part for you, but that's done in your head anyway. So, there we go. Heads up, hand holds up carrot for a power. 
Um, and the damage roll. Four bugs. Is going to, of course, be epic. And it's going to include face turning red and steam coming out of the ears. Because <laughs> nothing else will do when it's bugs. Um, and that token won't do at all, will it? So let's go ahead and change the token once again. You can still do that. You can do that as many times as you need to. You can clone these generally and uh, make as many bugs bunnies as you need to. So, click on right click on the token, change token, and then look for the appropriate monster. Except, wait a minute, I am not in the monsters token list. So, I need to get out of the PC tokens and go to monster tokens. And once I do that, I'm going to find not Bugs Bunny, but at least a bunny. I like this bunny, I've already used him. So, we find him, we click on him, then we save him, and save the whole thing. It is a double save. 